All right, the punch holder. Uh, here's the solid model of your punch holder that's located in your zipped file that I uh, provided on Blackboard. What you're going to have to do is pull this in, and then we're going to manipulate this project based on the piercing punch and the blanking punch that you've already created. Um, everybody will have a part that looks exactly the same to start with. It'll have four holes in the corners that are counterboard. Uh, that's to hold this block into the stamping machine. And then the two dowel pins here will locate this block uh, to the stamping machine. That's not going to change for anybody. Those will, always, those will be the same for everybody's part. The only things that are going to change are these two holes here. Um, they're bored through. And on the back, the two counterbores. Those will be different for everybody. And the spacing between these here will be different um, based on your washer size and your advance for your washer. So we're going to go over all that you need to do. So if I go in here, um, I have three other projects here open. Uh, one of them is my piercing punch. So I'm going to look at that. And I'm going to see for my job, I have a diameter here on this piercing punch of 0.5625. And I have a 0.750 uh, shoulder on here. So I need to know that. I also need to know that on my blanking punch, that I have a 1.125 diameter here and a shoulder of 1.250. So I know that. So that's the main thing I need. So I'm going to go back to my part here, and I'm going to modify that. Now I can do it a few different ways. I can just click on the sidewall of one of them and it will give me a diameter that I can change. I'm not worried about the spacing as of yet. Uh, we'll go over that in a little bit. So I could edit it there or I could just double click this, change this number. That's one way. Another way is that you could go into your history tree over here and highlight whatever you want to edit. Click on the picture by it and go to edit sketch. And then in here I could edit this sketch as well. So I am going to exit out here. I like to just click on this sidewall and change it right here. So I need this number here to be 1.125. Now if I type in 1.125 here, let me get it. It gives me an error. And the reason it's giving me an error is because the counter bore is actually only 1.125. So I need to actually make the counter bore a bigger size before I can make this one a bigger size. So I'm just going to say stop, and I'm going to hit undo. So edit, undo. Uh, get that going. All right, so first I'm going to edit the counter bores. So I'm going to go to the counter bore here. And this one is going to be, since I have a 1.250 shoulder on the bore, I'm going to make this 1.255 because I want a little bit of clearance. This one here, I need it to be 0.750, so I'm going to make it 755 for a little bit of clearance. Now it doesn't always auto update really fast, so if I click this rebuild button up top, they both will update to the correct board size. So I'll rotate this back over. Now I can edit both of these through holes. So this one here is going to be 1.125. And this one here is going to be 0.5625. So that gives me my sizes. But I really want this to fit through here, not size on size. I really want it to have like a thousandths clearance. So really instead of 0.5625, I want it to be 5635. And on this one here, instead of being 0.125, I want that to be 126. That way it'll give it a little bit of clearance. Now, it doesn't really matter how you draw it on here. I mean, somewhat matters, but when you actually cut it on the machine, that's when it's really going to matter. So I want to make sure everything's updated. So the size of these holes are now correct. Now it's just figuring out the spacing between the two. So I'm going to look at this from my top view. And the spacing between this hole and this hole need to be the advance of your um, your your uh, stamp die here. So 
to sometimes see this a little bit easier, I'm just going to go in and make a sketch. And I'm going to make a sketch of a circle right here. And a sketch of a circle on the center of this. And then I'm going to size both of those to the size of my washers. So I'm going to go to Smart Dimension, and I'm going to dimension this to the size of my washer is... Ooh, I'm not quite sure, so I'm just going to type in a number for now. And then I'm going to check it. So my washer size would be an outside diameter of 1.063. And my piercing punch size is 0.532. I'm not really worried about this one. I just need the outside size. So I want this to be 1.063. Close enough. And then I want this one to also be 1.063. I'm going to zoom in a little. I'm going to see I have a, this is my washer size. This is my washer size. So that would be what the washer would be when it advances. Now what you get between the two here, between this one and this one, is what's called your scrap bridge. Now your scrap bridge there's a theory for it, I'm sure. John probably taught you. But we're going to use 63 thousandths for our scrap, scrap bridge. So if I were to go in and make a center line here from this up, and make another center line from this up, and I'm just going to be making some center lines here. I'm going to zoom in, and I want to go from here straight up and from here straight up. so now I have these two entities here so if I were to smart dimension this from here to here this should be 63 thousandths that's giving me a little air here because I'm just checking what the size is so I have 112 thousandths here so I basically need to have that to be 63 thousandths. So what I have right now will not work. I'm just doing this so you can see kind of how it's supposed to work. But I can also use a calculator and figure this out. So that was just to show you that this will is not correct and we need to change it. So I'm going to go in and delete all the stuff I just created. I'm going to leave these two circles for now, just as a reference. And I'm going to close out of this sketch. So they're there, but they're just there for reference. All right. <coughs> so I need to locate these holes a little different. So the way I want to do it is usually what we do with this one is whatever the size of this is. So if I look, and this is a 0.564, I want to have this hole 0.564 off of the center of this block as well. So the easiest way to do that is to go in this, and I am then going to go to my top view. So I went into this to edit the actual sketch. So from this red point here to the center of this circle, I want to be 0.564. So I want it to match the size of whatever this hole is going to be. So I would take this number here and make this 0.564. All right, so this hole is now located where I want it. Now, figuring out where that goes is not uh, any real equation. We just need to have these somewhat centered on this block. And I've always found it easiest just to take whatever the size of this hole is, match it up here, and then this side over here will just be an accumulative distance of our advance. So this side is good. I hit OK. Now, this side, I need to take and do some math. So I'm going to bring up my calculator. So here's my calculator. And what it's going to be is my washer size. So 1.063 plus my scrap bridge. So plus 0.063 equals. So 1.126 is what my advance is going to be. So it's a pretty simple formula. It is your outside washer size, not the board hole here, but the actual washer size that you have plus your scrap bridge. And the scrap bridge for all of us is going to be 63 thousandths. So I want the distance between hole 1 and hole 2 to be 1.126. Now I put this hole over here at 0.594. So I need to take the difference of that. 
I actually put it at 0.564. So if I have this number and I go minus 0.5635 equals 0.5625. So that's how far I want the other hole, the second hole, to be off the center this way. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go in and edit this location. So this number here, this 0.6 or whatever yours ends up being, mine is going to be then 0.5. Nine or five six two five, I think it was. So I hit OK here. So now, if I were to measure between this hole and this hole, I should get what my advance is 1.126. So I can create. If I hit escape here, I'm going to go into this sketch here. This one that I made earlier. And if I were to do a smart dimension from the center of this hole to the center of that hole, I should get 1.126. Now I'm getting 1.127. So it's probably just a rounding error. It's probably 1.1265, which means I have it right. I am good to go. So I got my spacing between those correct. Now if I look at this again from my side here, I'll see that if my washer were to be pierced out, this is where my washer would be, so it pierces it out, and then it would advance to this location and then blank it. So I would get it correct. So this is what the size of the actual washer would be. Don't worry about this hole here because that's the shoulder that it's resting on. And I have a sixteenth between the two here. So that is how you get your piercing or your punch holder aligned. Now I'm going to exit out of this sketch here and I'm going to delete um, this just random sketch that I made for looking at it. So you can see it here. I'm then going to save this and what you're going to do is actually overwrite the one that you have and then also save it as an XT. So I'm going to file save and then save it as an XT. And I'm not actually going to do it because I don't want to overwrite mine. but. Um, you will. So that is the end of how you draw it, and the next little lesson we'll go over um, how to draw your die block.